All right, so in the previous video, we uh, worked through an example uh, of sketching the graph of a function step by step using the information from the function and its derivatives. So let me just try to summarize what we've done and, and clarify a few of the definitions that I introduced. Okay, so the idea with curve sketching is always the same. So you want to analyze f, f prime, and f prime prime. So let's start with f. So the first thing you find is the domain and the intercepts, and together these uh, you can use that to find out where f of x is positive or negative, because we know that f can only change signs where it crosses the x-axis, so the intercepts, or where it has discontinuities. Now you can also study symmetry, periodicity, and asymptotes, vertical, horizontal, and slant asymptotes from the definition of the function itself. Next you study f prime. Now again, you're interested in finding where f prime is positive and negative, so the places where it can change signs are wherever it's not defined or where it is zero. So you find these points and then you study where f prime is positive and negative. And this tells you something about the behavior of the function itself. If f prime is positive, then the function is increasing, so it's positive, increasing happiness. If f prime is negative, then the function is decreasing, so negative, decreasing happiness. All right, and then the last step is to study f prime prime. So again, f prime prime can change signs only when it's zero or not defined. So you find these points and then study interval to find where f prime prime is positive and negative. Now f prime prime will tell you about concavity of your function. So wherever f prime prime is positive, then f is concave up, positive, happy. If f prime prime is negative, f is concave down, negative, unhappy. All right, and that's pretty much all you need to be able to sketch the graph of any function. Okay, so let me just clarify a few of the definitions that I introduced. Uh, in fact, th these aren't definitions, but the first thing I want to talk about is uh, what's called the first derivative test. So with what we've seen now, we have a very nice way of understanding uh, where local max and min of a function occur. So we know that the, these will occur at critical numbers of f x. We've seen that last week. So we know that local max and min occur only at points where either f prime of x is zero, these are points where you have a horizontal tangent line, or where f prime of x does not exist. Now, if we assume that the function is continuous, then there's a very nice way of figure, figuring out whether a given critical number gives rise to a local min and max, and this is called the first derivative test, and it's pretty obvious from what we've seen so far. So suppose that you're given a critical number, so this is a point where either f prime of x is zero or it does not exist. Assume that f is a continuous function, then if f prime of x changes from positive to negative at c, then f of c is local max. Now this is again pretty obvious. If it is positive, then it's increasing. If negative, is decreasing. So at the point here where it changes sign, well, you get clearly a local max, right? But if it changes sign from negative to positive, then you get a local min. It's decreasing, increasing. So at the point where it changes, well, you clearly get a local min again. Now, if f prime does not change signs at c, that means it's not actually a local extremum. So you could get things like this. At this point here, I have a horizontal tangent line, but on both sides of, of this point, then my function is increasing, so f prime will not change sign. So that would be an example where you get a critical number which is not a local min or max. Or another example would be something like this. All right, so we can summarize that by saying that the local extrema of a continuous functions are the points on the graph where the derivative f prime changes sign, and it's a max if it goes from positive to negative, and a min if it goes from negative to positive. Okay, there's another test we can use to actually figure out whether a critical point of f of x is a local min or max. Uh, it's, it's called the second derivative test, so it involves now studying the second derivative. It's again pretty obvious from what we've seen in uh, the previous slide. But it only applies when f prime prime is continuous and well defined at a given point. So it's slightly more restrictive. And it doesn't work for all critical points. So first derivative test is usually the, the, the safest way to figure out whether a critical number is a max or min. But here it is. So suppose that f prime prime is continuous at a point. <clears throat> f of, of course is also continuous at this point. And suppose that the first derivative is zero. So that means that we know there's a horizontal tangent line at this point. Now suppose that f prime prime is positive, then you can conclude that f at c is a local min. Why is that so? Well, if it's positive, then you're smiling. So you know that your function is concave up, and you're assuming yeah, that you're right at the point where you have a horizontal tangent line, so clearly it will be a minimum. 
On the other hand, if f prime prime is negative, then you're unhappy. And again, if you're at the point where you have a horizontal tangent line, then it is a local max. So again, it follows directly from concavity that uh, this test must be correct. Now, if uh, it happens that you have a point where the first derivative is zero, but the second derivative is also zero, then you cannot conclude. So you don't know what happens. It could be that it's max, it could be that it's a min, or it could be that it's neither. So it's actually not an obvious, uh, you, cannot, you cannot conclude anything from the second derivative test when that happens. Okay, and there's something that I, I briefly mentioned in the previous video, which was inflection points. So just as we called a local extrema the points uh, on a continuous function, on a graph of a continuous functions, uh, where the f prime, the first derivative changes sign, we also have a name for the points where the second derivative changes signs. So these are called inflection points. These will be points where a function goes from being concave up to concave down, or vice versa. So it would be a point like this. So if, if it goes from concave down to concave up, it would be something like this. And if it goes from concave up to concave down, that would be something like this. All right, so now we know pretty much everything we need to know to be able to sketch the graph of functions. The only thing we haven't studied in detail yet is asymptotes. So that's what we'll do in the next video.